All right. We are here with another episode of RCW Relentless here on this Friday afternoon. As we have a Maya Blackwell coming out here. This is a no holds barred match to start off. RCW Relentless. So we announced that next week on RCW there will be a match, a tag team main event between Brian Danielson teaming up with the Blessed Warrior Jay Jin to take on the Red Dragon Kai and Katsu. Katsu had made his appearance known. Made his presence known, I should say, as Mercy comes out here. When, she, when he attacked Brian Danielson, which ultimately made Kai win that match. Planted Danielson square on his head, and now those two will face off next week in our main event in a tag team matchup. So... That should be interesting there. So we have Mercy Phantom coming out here. Now, she is a former RCW Women's Champion. Amaya Blackwell coming back and trying to attack Luna Outlaw, but Luna Outlaw getting the better of her there is a head scissor takedown to start this one off. And Amaya Blackwell coming back, getting some vengeance against the woman that had injured her, put her out of commission for a while. Now she is back. She has her sights set on the RCW Women's Champion as Amaya Blackwell with a crossbody off of the second rope. Off of the second rope there. And Boo's rang down as Mercy Phantom with a shot right there to Amaya Blackwell. Now Amaya, Amaya might be in trouble here. A monkey flip from the corner from Mercy. Crowd getting behind Mercy here as it, she goes for a cover here. One and a kick out easily from Amaya Blackwell. No holds barred. Weapons can be utilized. And I'm pretty sure they will as a belly to back suplex. And the booze continue to rain. Through the arena as Amaya Blackwell grabbing a chair here. Now Mercy going to shove the chair in the face. Of Amaya Blackwell, I believe Amaya was looking to use that there. Mercy, but a right hand. Grabbing the chair, and now going after the legs. Of Mercy Phantom. Oh, but she got out of the way, you know, not out of the way of that one. Full shot with the chair right there from Amaya Blackwell. Now, Bryce Blackwell being the current Ravage champion. From what I hear, he will also be defending the title next week. It's part of the championship rules. Oh, Mercy Phantom got out of the way of that one. Now Mercy, she just got her up. And no Mercy right there on Amaya Blackwell. Out of nowhere, she transitioned right into it. Two, three, and Mercy Phantom's going to get Amaya Blackwell. Wow. She transitioned into that so quickly. And we'd seen that in her match against Io Shirai. She took from the top rope. Io tried to jump from the top and Mercy caught her into the no mercy and transitioned right into it. But wow. Wow. That was quick, might I, might I add. Mercy Phantom made quick work of Amaya Blackwell, but go nowhere, folks, as we're getting to your next match in just a few moments.
we are on to your next matchup, folks, we have tag team action here. You're on Relentless. Let's see, who do we got? We have Rhyme and Reason. The RCW Tag Team Champions, the new RCW Tag Team Champions, beating the Ultimo Dragons on an episode of RCW. And these guys have had a long time coming. They've been one of the most dominant tag teams in recent memory. I mean, that is why they are the tag team champions. I mean, it's no secret. These guys have been dominant for a while now, but now they have the titles to prove it. Jacob Rhyme right there with the title. They are ready. Take on a decorated tag team here. In 3D. The Dudley Boys. They were former RCW Tag Team Champions too as well. And now these guys. Bubble Ray and Diva. This is a tag team extreme rules match. All four men in the ring simultaneously. So we have uh, Jacob Ryan going right after Diva. I believe as part of the rules here that we have when it comes to these matches. It's the elimination style, so I believe so. Sometimes we'd like to mix things up here on RCW. You have some tag matches where they will be elimination and others be one fall to a finish. I like to keep things let's keep things a little bit uh on your toes here a little bit less predictable is bubble ray dudley the shot right to the midsection oh jacob prime getting out of dodge there devon devon is down for the time being, Caleb Reason and Jacob Ryan taking it to Bubba Ray Dudley and using the chair. Getting a little bit extreme as Caleb Reason trying for the pin there, but to no avail. Bubba Ray, oh! I think he had inadvertently hit Caleb Reason with the chair. Jacob Ryan did there. I don't think he meant to at all. I think that was just trying to help out Caleb and it uh got away from him there. It's Devon Dudley with a couple of shots. Oh, Jacob Ryan though. Jacob Ryan with a shot right to the back of the head. Caleb Reason. Gonna take over Devon, but now Jacob Ryan turning his attention to Bubba Ray. Not much he could have done there to save his partner. And Jacob Ryan, all the strength and power, and the baseball bat from Devon Dudley doing some work. It's now 3D has made this a two-on-one handicap right now is Caleb was a little out here 
Jacob Bryan. Oh! Whippersnapper off of the apron there. Devon, though. Caleb Reason getting a chair from the ringside area. Devon still fighting. Devon still fighting back here. Devon, my God, taking down Jacob Ryan. Again, both of these teams are RCW Tag Team Champions in their own right here with uh, the current RCW Tag Team Champions, Ryan and Reason. It's STO, the famous STO. From Jacob Ryan and a kick out of two and a half from Devon. Now, into that suplex there. Finishing off Bubba Ray Dudley and Caleb Reason. And Jacob Ryan doing their thing here. Oh, that Larian turning Devon inside out. One, two, three, and Devon's gone. Now it's just Bubba Ray. Against both Caleb Reason. Jacob Ryan is a whipper snapper there from Jacob Ryan. It's Caleb Reason grabbing the baseball bat going right after Bubba Ray. Devon is down. Now these guys are looking to prove that they are the best tag team here. Bubba Ray throwing in Caleb. But there's Jacob Ryan. And there's Caleb Reason right there to take over. Oh. A little mishap there. Caleb on the comeback now. Kick right to the face of Bubba Ray Dudley. And Jacob Prime is watching his partner just have his way. Oh, the Dream Valley driver. There it is. Right on to Bubba Ray, and it might be over. And it is. Rhyme and Reason. Have taken out 3D. Eliminating both. And Rhyme and Reason continue their dominance here. As the RCW Tag Team Champions eliminating 3D. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to get to your next match momentarily as we go over to the break screen. Alright, folks, we're getting to your next matchup, folks. As we have Kevin Owens coming out here now. Kevin Owens, the prize fighter. He had won the Battle Royal here on Relentless. And I believe it was the season two premiere last episode. As he beat CM Punk. He eliminated CM Punk was the last guy that he had to get rid of. 
to win a future title opportunity. And that's of his choosing. He can choose any title. It doesn't necessarily have to be the world title. But, you know, I have a feeling that based on the past with him and the world title that he is definitely going to want another shot at it. Because him and Brian Outlaw, when Brian Outlaw was champion, not this time, I believe, but in one of the times that Brian Outlaw was champion, they had butted heads. And it was Kevin Owens who had stole the lottery case from Ricochet when he won it at RCW Recoil. And Kevin Owens cashed, cashed it in, beat Brian Outlaw unofficially becoming the RCW world champ. Unofficially, because he wasn't the one who, who won it, so... The title was given back to Brian Outlaw, and and um, the rivalry continued from there, and it was Brian who ended up retaining uh, against Kevin Owens. So, but it appears that Brian Outlaw and the Outlaws, all of their um, focus is not necessarily on championship gold. I had mentioned. Uh, I believe it was on one of my mod streams, Young Sin, that the Outlaws don't really care about gold. They don't really care about titles. I mean, they care about submit, submitting a legacy. They care about, you know, sort of being not only the center of attention. Um, and obviously, being the center of attention, titles, you being the champ, everybody wants you. Um, that type of deal. But this was more than just about them winning gold. It's more than that to them. This is their brand. Like, this... The RCW is their home. It is... It is what made them them. So, that's what they care about. They care more about the status of the company than... in flourishing the company uh, and you know being submitting that legendary legacy and I always constantly say this all the time it doesn't really matter how many titles you've won like that's great accolades um, but you know a good example of this is the youngest Divas champion Paige you know she unfortunately had to retire at just 25 but she accomplished things that no other woman can say that they did in terms of, you know, becoming the youngest Divas Champion of all time, becoming the youngest two-time Divas Champion, and also, you know, winning it on her first night on the main roster, um, April 7, 2014, after WrestleMania 30. And... You know, everything that she did with her character, there was nobody like her. She was considered the anti-diva, everything opposite that a diva was supposed to be. And I think, you know, that's what... That's what people remember. Like, people remember matches. You can remember matches. You can remember title reigns. But the reason why people remember The Rock and Stone Cold is not because of their title reigns. It's because of the historic rivalries that they've had, what who they were as entertainers. And I think from that perspective that that's what the outlaws think of is how are they going to remember us as entertainers? And so that's the that's the bottom line. That's what they that's what they care about. But Kevin Owens, this man right here, you know, the thing that he cares about now is that potential title opportunity that he has. But in this two out of three falls match with someone like Ciampa, you know, Ciampa wants his own shot at the title. He is a former breakout champion. Now that title no longer in existence due to the heinous acts of Bobby Saturn. He basically kind of played this little childish 
type of, he kind of has this little childish type of attitude because he said, if I can't have it, then nobody can. And Kushida retained that championship. And then Bobby Saturn just went and destroyed it. So that's why Daybreak is no longer in existence anymore. Because that man had destroyed it as a kick out at one. And I have no doubt that we are just seeing the beginning of the rivalry between him and Kushida. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens with a stunner. Oh, but Ciampa got out of the way. Pushed him away out of that one. Oh, but Ciampa, Ciampa. Ciampa with a shot right to the back of the hamstring. Oh, neck breaker there. So he's gone fairly quickly, folks. Oh, as he was busted open off of that elbow strike. But Ciampa, Ciampa with the blood in his eyes. He's still going. There's Whip. The other corner here. And Ciampa going to charge in with that knee. As he has Kevin Owens, the prize fighter, right where he wants him. Oh, a little bit of a choke. In the corner, referee had to tell him to stop here. Disqualifications do apply here in the two out of three falls. But a right hand missed. Kevin Owens. Oh, the atomic drop. From Ciampa. Oh, good shot. Right to the back of Kevin Owens. And, and this is the biggest opportunity for Kevin Owens. There was a lot of great people in that matchup. There was a lot of good people in that matchup. You know, you had the likes of CM Punk in that matchup. Darby Allen, Sinister. You know, you had so many great su superstars in that matchup. Great wrestlers in their own right. You know, who made a lot of accomplishments in our in our CW in in their own right. You know, not necessarily titles, just you know, like I said, here in our CW, it's more than you just being the champ. You know, it's more than you just winning titles. If everything was about winning titles then, you know, pretty much almost every wrestler under the sun, you know, would be bragged. Um, you know, people like Ric Flair, obviously, 16-time champion. You know, and I'm not saying that Ric Flair isn't great. He is. You know, one of the greatest of all time. But he was more than just titles. Eddie Guerrero, lying, cheat, cheating, and stealing. More than just titles. There's a kick out at one here. There's a huge knee strike from Ciampa. There's Ciampa. Oh, Ciampa tried to go for the fairy tale ending there. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens caught him with a stutter. One, two, caught him with a stutter out of nowhere, but a kick out at two and a half there. He almost had Ciampa. Another stunner! And he got him. Kevin Owens. Up 1-0 on Ciampa. Oh, got to plant Ciampa. Right on the neck. One... Two and a kick out. Right on the surgically repaired neck of Ciampa. Oh, but Ciampa with a shot right to the midsection. And now Ciampa. Ciampa gonna lift him up. Looking for the fairy tale ending. There it is. A fairy tale ending. And it might be the end of Kevin Owens. And it is. And it's just like that. Ciampa ties it up. Oh, he tried for that lariat. You know, the rebound lariat, but to no avail there. Champa able to tie it up with one fairy tale ending right just as Kevin Owens got the first fall.
As these two men continue to battle. Oh, good shot right there. Right to Kevin Owens' boots in the corner. Oh, there he goes, chump of the strength. And Kevin Owens. I'll try to rush in there, Elbert Chompa. Chompa couldn't. Oh, there's a good clothesline from the prize fighter. I'm going to lift him up here. Oh, right off of the knee. Could that be it for Chompa? Two. No, Chompa with a kick out. Kevin Owens almost had it there. Oh, standing switch here from Champa and a shot right to the back of that hamstring again. Earth whipped to the outside. And Champa giving him a little bit of a talking to here, talking a little fresh. He's taking Owens right outside to the crowd. Count a 20 under RCW rules. Count of four here. This is very strange from Ciampa. I don't know why you would try. Oh my God, what an STO from Kevin Owens. Seven. And now Kevin Owens. Doing some redecorating as a count of nine. As both men get in the ring at the count of ten here. Oh, he might have caught him. Knees to the back and caught Kevin Owens. He caught Owens. One, two, to get the win. And Owens kicked out at two and a half. He caught Owens off guard. And now Ciampa, looking to wear down the prize fighter. Oh, but there's Owens. Breaking out of that hole, oh, trying to go for the stunner, but a kick right to the midsection stopped it. Look more, and there it is, there it is, the stunner! Stunner on Ciampa, there, oh, kick out of two and a half. There's not much Owens can do that he hasn't done already. Oh, what a neck breaker. As Ciampa continues to battle. This is insane. Wow. Mind you folks, we still have your women's main event. Marielle Rogue in a Hell in a Cell match with the likes of Rhea Ripley. They're looking to go right off of the knee. There goes Chava again. Owens trying so desperately to get the win, but Chava's not going to let him have it. Not that easily. Oh, he's looking for it. The Papa Powerbomb Classic Owens. One, two to get the win over Chava, and again he kicks out of two and a half. My God, it's gonna be a fight. A fight for this last fall here. Oh, and close line in the corner. Chava again stomping away. Referees trying to gain some control here. Chompa looking like he did nothing. Like a little kid trying to act all innocent there. One. And a kick out. Again, Kevin Owens. Continues to battle back. Gives a shot right to the back. Oh! Chompa with a kick right to the midsection. Oh, look at a big boot turning Owens inside out. Oh. 
God. The disrespect from Ciampa. Oh, we might be going for the fairy tale ending right here. It might be the end of Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens. Oh my God, the knees right to the back. One, two, Ciampa's got it. He had him up there for a little bit. Owens tried to break out of it. And Ciampa. Able to battle back. Like his song says, no one will survive, not even Owens. But Owens still has that title opportunity in his back pocket that he can cash in at any time. Any time whatsoever. And I bet Seth Rollins, Rob Van Dam, and Bryce Blackwell are watching closely because all of those titles could be up for grabs. Now, normally, the Rabbit Championship is a open challenge type of title. It's like a TV title. Anybody can challenge for it. We've had... You know, the likes of Brad Williams' debut. Um, you know, we had um, the debut of Austin Lee when he attacked uh, Rey Mysterio. You know, we've had so many debuts. Uh, Sammy Callahan. Um, you know, and a, and a bunch of others uh, th throughout the Ravage title's existence. and But Kevin Owens could easily use that title opportunity for the Ravage title. I doubt he would, but he could easily do it if he wanted to. Champa gets a victory here. As we go to your main event of the show here, Mario Rogue and Rhea Ripley. Hell in a Cell. Okay, folks, here we go. It's main event time. There's the cell right there. As so we have Mario Rogue coming out here first. Now, she had made her presence known when Brian Outlaw had said that, you know, sometimes when you have enemies, you can find a common ground. Well, I have one. And then her, lo her logo popped up. She threw Paige off of the production truck. And because of that, Paige will be out for a significant amount of time. I'm not too sure of the nature of her injuries, but all I know is is when you take a tumble off of a production truck onto concrete, you're going to be hurt. I don't care who you are. But there's Mario Rogue. And now her family, the Rogue family, they were released 
from RCW, her included. She's the only one of her family to be signed back. She wanted to come back. But she didn't want to be the same person that she was when she was let go. So obviously you can see that she's definitely been in the gym. Definitely worked out a few things. And Marielle is a force here. And being trapped inside a cage with someone like Mario, that's the last thing you want. That is the very last thing that you want, is to be trapped. In a cage. With a woman like this. Now Rhea Ripley, it, like her song says, brutality. She's definitely going to have to dish a lot of that out. She wants to take down Mario. As Rhea Ripley comes out here. Now, Rhea Ripley hasn't had much success in RCW in terms of titles, but like I said... Success is measured in a lot of ways, not just by title reigns. It's about what you do when you walk out here and walk down that ramp and get in the ring. And Rhea Ripley, like I mentioned, like her song says, she's going to have to do a hell of a lot here to get Marielle to stay down. You know, Marielle does not have any members of the Outliers with her. This is mono -y mono, but I would have to say this this plays into the field of Marielle more than it does Rhea Ripley. Because, I mean, we can judge by her entrance, you know, the, the, the darkness of her entrance. We've seen what she's able to do before in previous seasons, but this is a whole new Mariel Rogue. This isn't the same person that we've seen in Season 4 and Season 5 of RCW, the regular show. It's not... She, she doesn't have Jay Rogue by her side. She doesn't... You know, she doesn't have her brother Jay by her side. She doesn't have that anymore. She doesn't have, you know, Rosemary, you know, at her disposal either. You know, she doesn't... Th that storyline, you know, that... That... That time where the Rogue family basically tried to ruin the Outlaw family... You know, by getting Brian Outlaw to do the unthinkable and turn on his brother Jason in Season 4 at RCW Anarchy when uh, they basically lost the titles. He, he had hit him off of the apron and, you know, I think it was the Usos that ended up ultimately winning that match. But now it's, now this is a new and improved Mario, you know, and apparent, and I guess apparently, Brian and Marielle have found a common ground, and now it's, and now they're together in one of the, the most, perhaps, like even though they just formed. The Outliers just formed, and, and we haven't really seen much of them as a team yet. Same thing with the Savages as a super kick right to the face. Oh, right off of the apron there. Even though we haven't seen much from them, you know, there's no telling what the future holds for a team. 
like the outliers. It's just it's just not gonna look good for whoever ends up being on the receiving end of you know making the outliers a little mad. Oh, there it is with a spine buster. And, um, you know, I had a chance to speak with Brian Outlaw and, and kind of just talk about a few things and, and talk about just what transpired at Asylum. Like, everybody knows, like, what happened in Season 4 when um, he turned on Jason. He was under the spell of Rosemary, but this... But this was no spell. This was no potion. This was just straight up. This was literally straight up. You know, he did it. That type of thing. Aliza did not put him up to that. Or anything. You know, Aliza was ultimately the one that turned on Sky. And obviously, Sky, here is we got Rhea Ripley here with a Riptide. Right on to Mary Road. One, two, to get the victory here and a kick out. But, um, you know, we saw that. And honestly, I don't know what the deal is because, you know, we'd seen Sky, um, we'd seen her not come out with the title. Like, Kari is the dream champion. She's she's the dream champion. Aliza got a victory over her and got the pin so she can be the next one in line. So I don't I don't I don't get it. Like I would understand it if Sky had the title. You know, that's basically, you know, having a target on your back saying, you know, I want what you have, but but what does Sky have that that Aliza wants. Like, I, I can't think of it. Maybe it's just the jealousy of, like, you know, Sky's known to be the typical, you know, high school mean girl that every that every single guy's into. And, you know, maybe it's because she gets all that attention and Aliza doesn't like that. I, I, I have no idea what to really say when it comes to that, but we're, we're here. You know, we're here. The outlaws, the the outlaws are pretty much no more, you know, it's 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 sad to be honest, you know. It's sad that, you know, Brian Outlaw just chose to throw that all away. And part of me thinks it's just it's not just Elisa. It's not just the relationship that he has with Elisa or anything. And part of me thinks that it's a lot more than that, you know. And we'll have to find out exactly what that is. Going forward as these two ladies are just duking it out here on the outside. Oh, Rhea Ripley trying to end this here. Rhea Ripley, kick out. This is just crazy. None of these ladies have gone for really anything too too damaging. Is a drop kick right there. I thought it was going to be a knee strike there. It looked like she was going to charge up the knee right to the side of the head. Decided not to. Oh, missed the missed the strike there. Reversal there from Marielle. Marielle looking for Hades call. Hades call right here on Rio Ripley. Hades call right here on Rio Ripley. Rio Ripley trying to escape here. Rio Ripley's gonna tap, and just like that. Marielle gets the victory. Nothing too big here. You know, they were battling out. On the outside for quite some time. Rhea Ripley hit the riptide. But that was it. Rhea Ripley, I mean, here's the belly to belly here. That... There's that. 
Marielle didn't really hit anything too big either. There's the Riptide that we just mentioned there, and I thought it was all over right there. But as you can see, the kick out, and these ladies were on the outside. But it only took that. She locked that in. And she's ended two matches so far with that with the Hades call. As Marielle Rogue has staked her claim here on RCW, making quick work of Rhea Ripley. You know, I certainly thought that somebody was going to go through the cell. We were going to have, you know, this grueling match. Between Rhea Ripley and Marielle, but one person that I think she has her crosshairs set on is Luna Outlaw. Or Lily Savage. As now that the outliers are formed, you know, you got Aliza with the Outlaws, you have Marielle Rogue with the Outlaws. But now it's a now it's a conflict here. You have Luna Outlaw, Brian's younger sister, somebody that he cares so deeply about. We we haven't we saw what happened with Sky and Aliza. We saw that. But now there's no telling what we're going to see next with the Savages, the Outliers, and anything else that might transpire here on RCW because of all of this. This isn't just about them teaming together. This isn't about, you know, factions or teaming or anything. It's There's got to be more to this and we'll have to find out exactly what that is as we continue the road to rcw reclaim in las vegas